Hello and welcome back to Expedition GeForce in Planet Coaster. In this video we're going to be doing a lot of work with beams and straight away you can see this. Uh, yeah we're going to be making custom catwalks, custom friction brakes as you can see now and the custom cable lift which isn't as good as I hoped but I'll get onto that later. I mean I think I've done the best I can with it but you know Planet Coaster in-game limitations limitations make that a challenge uh, but yeah straight away we're making friction brakes and the reason why I've made these myself you can see that there are some other Intamin Giga friction brakes alongside and I was just trying to use that to replicate how close it is to the track um, and almost the height of it as well but the friction brakes on Expedition GeForce are different to the ones in game um, they do have a bit of a different shape and I think, I'm not sure if Millennium Force uses the in-game ones, but I do think that the in-game Giga Coast is heavily inspired by Millennium Force. Um, so the actual in-game ride system I've used with this is, of course, the Barghest, that's its name in the game, which is the Gerslauer Eurofighter, and that allows me just to have um, the tri-track that I've got here. And then I've obviously gone over the top of that with the quad track from the Giga Coaster in-game uh, track type to make it look just like Expedition GeForce because Expedition GeForce does use both, and you'll be very you'll be very familiar with this uh, if you've been watching the other two episodes where we did the track work and we've finished the layout now, which I'm really happy with. Um, but yeah, basically we've had to make these ourselves because the in-game ones don't look very good and yeah I've got to make this a one-to-one -one recreation I can't expect the planet cursor to automatically generate things for me so yeah um, but yeah that's basically all the friction breaks done you did see me uh, very quickly add them all the way around the layout there are two straight such true oh my god I'm stuttering a lot today guys there are two straight sections of track halfway through around the layout and one of them still works I believe but the one uh, like the first one that comes to on the truck uh, that you know the, the actual brakes have been taken out but the frame for it still sits there so that's pretty interesting and obviously with it being a one-to-one -one recreation I'm just gonna have to add to that useless trim break in to make it look exactly like Expedition GeForce does in real life uh, right now you can just see me doing a few random things um, there is this wooden fence which the ride does go very very closely over um, on that final turn into the station um, so yeah just even though we're not really getting onto the bordering of anything yet and putting foliage in I just thought that was quite an important feature to add there um, yeah just to help me get that turn to look right and you've probably seen me do a bit of terrain work as well you can see now that the floor plan is gone for the most part um, yeah, I noticed that this part of the brake run is on a hill, so I kind of wanted to replicate that a bit. So I've done a little bit of terrain work. A lot of it was off camera because terrain work is an absolute pain. In fact, I actually downloaded Google Earth Pro onto my laptop so I could have a look around and see where the uh, elevation changes are. And um, yeah, it's interesting. It it's not what you think. I think there may be some issues with it, to be honest, um, but there's some parts which seem lower, which are actually higher. And for example, the lake is like the highest point of the whole area, the lake that the coaster does pass over halfway around the layout, and that doesn't really make sense. That makes me think it might not be that accurate. So I've sort of used Google Earth Pro, which is free, even though it says Pro in the name, it sounds like you'll have to pay for it, but it is free. So if you are doing recreations, you could use that to help yourself um, look at what different floor plans you can get because you can also travel back in time. So one feature I've been able to use with Google Earth Pro is going back and looking along the timeline at some old uh, bird's eye view images of this ride. And back in the day, there wasn't as many trees around this coaster. So looking at those images definitely helped me work out where stuff is because in the more recent um, bird's eye view photo of this area it's really overgrown so that makes this a challenge 
Um, and yeah, that almost makes this recreation become a lot harder than I first anticipated because there's so many bits where I need to build custom supports and I can hardly see what they look like because it's so sheltered by trees. Um, but yeah, with that out of the way, uh, we're now doing the break run. Um, well, we're not anymore, we've basically just finished it. Um, but yeah, you saw me yeah, just recreating the break run. Lots of beam pieces have been used. Um, yeah, right now we're actually just doing the stairs that go up to it and this was actually quite hard to do because when the train comes down into the brakes there's not really a good angle of it as much as you may think on the POV and because it's so low down there's lots of trees so it was hard to get photos of this. Um, but after looking around on YouTube I managed to find a reverse POV and that absolutely saved me. Uh, funnily enough, the quality of that was like the best I've ever seen from any Expedition GeForce POV and it was backwards which was very cool. Um, so I managed to see the how it looked from this final turn. Um, so I could see that one, that uh, one the staircase there and then I could just duplicate that because I don't see why they would use different staircases for different, you know, it's just why would what you'd use the same one wouldn't you? Very obvious choice. Um, now moving on, we are going to begin work on the lift hill and that's in fact what we're going to be doing for the rest of this video. Uh, you can just see me here working with beams yet again um, to make this a, well this is the cable lift and the little holes that you can see there are actually the anti-roll box. There's one, you know, there's two tracks either side and there's um, mechanisms underneath the train which click onto them and that's the clicking noise that you hear on roller coasters if you didn't already know. Um, and you can see that I'm actually building this on a flat surface and that's because when duplicating more than one uh, item in the game it always has it you know facing up um, so like the green arrow is always pointing up it doesn't match up with the angle that you want to build so I had to build it flat and then rotate it to 30 degrees and because of this lift hill I did build it at 30 degrees I'm pretty sure it would will be 30 degrees in real life as well um, but that allowed me to be able to snap the angle of this um, this uh, this part part of the cable lift, so I could get that to 30 degrees, so it matches up perfectly with the lift hill, and I think it looks pretty good. Obviously, you will notice one major issue with this, and it's that there's a chain lift going right through the middle, and that is a bit frustrating for me as well. Um, but I've really thought about it, and there's not really you know this is the best way I can recreate this coaster because if I want to use the actual chain lifting game plus it the actual chain lifting game doesn't look that good anyway um, it's not what Expedition G-Forces looks like to be honest um, but anyway the in-game one well the coaster that has that chip that cable lift also doesn't have tri-track which I need for the layout so I've just had to use the the chain lift that we've got here try and cover it up and fit it in the best I can to make it look like it is a, a cable lift which Expedition GeForce obviously does use. Um, so that's my explanation why there's a big cable, I mean a big chain in the middle. You see I'm getting confused with all these words, I've been saying them each a lot. And again here another limitation is that there's big wheels in the middle of the station which is quite frustrating. Um, yeah, this little thing here that you can see does actually go all the way back almost right to the back of the station but because there's massive drive tires I decided I would just have to cut it a little bit short because it's gonna look worse if there's drive tires you know like clipping through this whatever this is this is like the bottom of the cable lift which uh, picks it up and carries it to the top I'm also building the catch car now which sits in the middle in this hole and this does uh, clip onto a cable um, which goes all the way along up the, the lift hill then back down where the drop is and along through the trees near ground level and then it come, meets back at the bottom of the lift hill um, and the, the uh, catch car here does actually move but there's not really any way I can get this to move I don't know how I would be able to use blender or the maker toolkit items to animate a moving cable lift I just don't think that's possible uh, at least not for me, I don't think I could ever build anything like that. Well, not build because it's not even in Planet Coaster. Um, so, but yeah, I just thought that I had to put 
the capture car in the middle of the track because it sort of looked weird at the bottom how it was hollow um, so even though it's unrealistic that the catch car just doesn't move I think it's better than nothing and anyway now on to the actual last thing of the video which is still on the lift hill but this is going to be the catwalk and I did think of just using the in-game catwalk but as always it's not really that realistic I mean it's realistic it does the job people can walk up and down it but it's not what Expedition G-Forces looks like and the main difference here is the you know the cross ties you sh I could say the things that join the three bars that, are, that move parallel to the lift hill the, the, the vertical bars that you can see here they all go vertically in real life but in the game they don't they go at a right angle to the lift hill and also the connectors at the bottom you can see as well they are all diagonal um, but the in-game catwalks meet it at a right angle so that it's like um, an L shape so I had to use the diagonal beam piece well it's not like a that's not the name of the piece but I had to use a beam piece diagonally to make it look like the actual one and to be fair this catwalk was quite easy to do for the most part because it's just one long straight section so you can see that I put it flat again like I spoke about before to, and then rotated it to 30 degrees and that's just so you know it's a lot easier because of the way that the game snaps the um, the planes that you're your advance moving into if that makes sense um, but the hardest part with making these catwalks is joining up to the station and you know when you crest over the hill at the top um, joining up to the station probably wasn't too bad because this ride really it's just it's quite a tight um, turn up into the it's not really turn I'll call it an increasing gradient the increasing gradient where it goes from the station to the lift hill does happen very sharply so I didn't really have to build too many pieces at different angles so that bit at the bottom was wasn't too bad really but all hell breaks loose when we get to the top I'm telling you uh, yeah cresting the hill was really really annoying um, yeah it, it's very difficult it takes ages it took me probably like at, at least 40 minutes to get it to crest over this hill and um, just so repetitive <laughs> makes me want to not play this game anymore to be honest but we did get it done in the end and I'm really happy with it I think it looks good um, one tool in this that saved me literally is the using the world axis and I know some people who play this game think oh what's the point in the world axis what does it do well it snaps the the, the plane of which way your advanced move tools go to well 90 degrees I guess um, so basically if you put a coaster down it will by default be at a specific angle and when you use the world axis tool that axis matches up with the angle of that um, if that makes sense so when I place this coaster down I didn't rotate it at all which means that the lift hill is p perfectly parallel to any piece that I use the world axis um, rotation method if that makes sense um, I apologize for the whole of this video if I've struggled to explain things right but I'm really hoping that you're just on the same wavelength and you understand what I mean even though I can't properly speak English to explain it um, and yeah anyway now we are just um, well yeah we're just finishing this there's going to be a lot of repetitivity here so I'm going to stop talking about this and talk about something else so in the last video on my channel, which was actually Lillianberg, I talked about how I'm struggling to get time to make videos and my upload schedule's crap. But actually, I've got some pretty good video ideas that I think, well, not really that I ideas, but expect you can expect some different unique videos coming soon, that's all I'm going to say. Um, but yeah, I feel a bit more motivated with YouTube again, so just stay tuned for upcoming videos. But that's the end of this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Uh, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.